In this video, we're gonna cover the seven tips to increase donations for your nonprofit. Let's get into it. We are Ted and Lisa Snyder. We are nonprofit consultants, and we do this because we think the world, nope. Take two. We are Ted and Lisa, sorry. It's okay, <laughs> I, I just, I, no. Go. We are Ted and Lisa Snyder, and we are nonprofit consultants, and we do this because we believe that a better world needs healthier nonprofits. Yes, and today we are talking about tips to increase your organization's donations. And this is huge because every nonprofit, like, yes, it says nonprofit in the tax designation, but at the end of the day, you need funds and other resources in order to actually accomplish what it is that you want to accomplish in the world. And what we love to see is organizations go from asking for donations and getting some to getting better at asking for donations so that they can actually increase how much they are taking in so that they can increase the impact that they are having. So we have seven tips today, so we're just going to jump into these. Tip number one, identify your top supporters. Now, there are a lot of different ways to identify your top supporters, but it's important to know who they are so that way you can leverage those relationships in different ways. So mm -hmm. why don't you talk about that a little bit? So a lot of times organizations don't know who their top supporters are. And so when they think I need to increase donations, they go online, they're like throwing it out into the world. Will someone please donate something? Or they're doing a Google, a Google search or something like that. One of the best ways to start doing this is to actually identify who your current top supporters are because chances are they are connected to people who care about what they care about. And mm. so through that, you're going to start to figure out, man, a lot of our supporters own this type of business or they have this type of background um, or they all seem to like to play golf. Huh. <laughs> and as you can identify those top supporters and some common characteristics, it'll actually help you to be able to um, identify more people that could potentially be great for your organization. This isn't to leave people out, but it is to help you start to uh, start to figure out what that language is so that you can be connecting best with your donors. Tip number two is set regular appointments and be upfront about your ask. I'm gonna cover the upfront part about this real quick yeah. and let you talk about the regular appointments thing because so many nonprofits kind of beat around the bush and they try to like uh, just kind of weasel their way in and, <laughs> and it's because they're uncomfortable asking yep. for donations. They don't like the idea of like saying like, oh, we need your money or whatever, yep. right? But you need to be upfront about it. You need to be confident about it. You need to say, here's what I'm asking. I'm asking, can you make this donation today? and just let it sit. Being upfront, people respect that. You know, they can tell when you're weaseling around and trying to beat around the bush and try to, all that does is it makes people feel guilty and most people, their reaction to feeling guilty is just like, eh, I don't wanna deal with this at all. So when you're upfront, I mean, sometimes it's even as simple as saying like, hey, I'm calling today because I'm asking for a $5 donation. Now we're gonna talk about what that means. You yep. know, like you start with that, but yeah, regular appointments. So setting the regular appointments and being upfront in this context is really starting to actually build those relationships with your supporters, asking who they can connect you with. And then when you're meeting with them and even before the meeting saying, hey, I'd like to take you out for coffee. My goal is to tell you about the organization. I'm hoping you'll support us or that you'll become a donor or that you'll volunteer with us or whatever it might be. Um, too often, Nonprofits run fundraising events and they never mention it's a fundraiser. Too often people invite someone out for coffee. They're like, I just want to catch up with you. And then they sit down, they go into a spiel about their nonprofit. And the other person sitting across from the table is like, whoa, what happened? Here? Or they're I like, oh, we I knew this up. was going to happen. Yeah, or <laughs> I knew this is what it was. Um, and so just as you're setting regular appointments, the regular part's important because if you're meeting with someone once every couple of weeks, you're going to get more comfortable asking for donations. Um, but then also you're keeping it forefront so that's on your mind so that you're just, it'll start coming up naturally in conversation, but be honest about why you're meeting with someone. Don't set them up to feel uncomfortable. Be very straightforward. Hey, I want to meet for coffee. I'd love to catch up. Part of it, honestly, though, I'm just going to tell you, I'd like you to support an organization that I'm starting. I'd like to just share a little bit about it with you, see if you'd be up for it. Either way, after that, I'd like to catch up for about 45 minutes and just talk about life. Be honest and set the appointments because 
you can't wait for people to reach out to you. Yeah, that leads actually into tip number three, which is start with why. You know, in a specific situation like that, you want to start with why. You want to start with why you're getting together with them. Because if you start with a lie, <laughs> that people will be able to smell that. You just say, oh, I just want to catch up. And then the whole time you're catching up, they, they kind of like in the back of their head, they're like, this person doesn't normally like just get together with me to catch up. Like what's actually going on? This their wheels start to spin. And then when you finally get around to the why, then they're like, Oh, <laughs> I get it. I see what's going on here. And they've already like set up tons of barriers because they're uncomfortable. And they feel like you are lying to them. Well, Cause you are <laughs> like the amount of trust that can be depleted in that moment is huge. So start with why, you know, setting the appointment, but then also when you're at the appointment, Start with why. Every conversation you have should be start with why. Um, but start with why about why the donation matters, why you're asking for it, what's going on, why why they'd even care about your organization mm -hmm. before you jump into the, so here's how to give today. Yeah, yeah and exactly. <laughs> like the how and the what will take care of themselves when people understand the why. So start with why, and you'll find that, you know, if you're, if you're, telling them why a donation matters, they're going to find a way to donate. Mm -hmm. They don't need to know, they don't need you to tell them what the website is necessarily. They, they can find you. They will find ways to get money to you or they'll find ways to volunteer if you start with why, especially in the donation side. Yes. They're going to they're gonna find how to get money to you. Yep. Um, the fourth point here is share stories. I think we're on four. <laughs> yeah, four <laughs> share tip. stories yeah. that resonate with your vision statement. Now we go through this a lot in our course, how to ask for and get money without feeling icky. Um, and this is really important because a lot of times we will hear organizations share stories, which is super important, but they'll forget to connect them back to what their vision statement actually is. So uh, a couple years ago, I was talking to an org leader and they told me a story about some people that they had helped. And the story was great. But when I looked at their pamphlet and read their vision story, they weren't connected at all. The people that they were helping in the story and the people at their organization said they were going to help in their vision statement, they didn't line up. Um, the vision statement was focused on one sector of life and the way that they helped the people didn't line up. And so I was looking at it going, do you even know what you're doing though? Like, do you understand what you're trying to do? If I give you money for this, is it going toward your vision statement or is it going for this other thing? And I don't understand what the point of this is. Um, or, or is it going to go to something completely different or something? Yeah. Something else. different. I'm like, yeah. are you telling me the story and you're giving me a vision statement, but 20 bucks is actually going to go towards something completely different. Make sure that you share stories that resonate with your vision statement. Mm -hmm. Um, so that people actually understand what it is that you're trying to do and that they can connect with that why. As Ted said, if people understand the why, they will figure out the how themselves. Yep. And then uh, tip number five is connect the stories of the one to the overall numbers. So you tell a story about an individual that you helped or a family that you helped or maybe an orphanage that you helped. Like this is the story of the one. Then you connect it with the overall numbers. Here yeah. is the metrics of our our how much we were able to help in the past how much we helped this year and how much our goal is next year so that people yeah. can really see the trend lines this is about showing them a trend line like hey this train is going from here to here and you can hop on this train if you want to be a part of <laughs> what's happening choo choo baby <laughs> 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 it's so important. Typically, organizational <laughs> leaders lean toward either knowing their metrics, their numbers, or they lean toward telling stories. And regardless of where you naturally lean, you need to figure out how to do both if you want to increase the amount of donations that you receive for your organization. You also need to know who you're talking to. If you're talking to someone who doesn't really care about stories, still figure out a way to weave it in. Just keep it a little bit shorter. If you're talking to someone who only wants to hear the stories, make sure that they know that the amount of money that they're giving is going to help create more of those stories. And you do that by sharing the numbers. Yeah, when you connect the stories mm -hmm. to the overall numbers, you'll you'll probably find that more people choo choo choose your organization oh uh, to make a contribution to. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> so tip number uh, six. This is at the end of that outline. Ask 
directly. Now there's the asking and being upfront. That is setting your expectations for what you're hoping to have happen. Asking directly is being very specific about what the ask is. I am asking you today to donate $50 and to have it be a recurring donation for three months. I am asking you today to pledge a certain amount over 12 months toward this specific project. I am asking you, would you consider donating? I'm looking, I'm hoping that you would consider giving $100 today. Um, we're looking to fund this project. Would you be willing to do it? Those conversations are very uncomfortable if you're not used to having them. And they're pretty uncommon in a lot of nonprofits. It's it's surprising. It's so people, uncommon. They just, they feel so uncomfortable making, it, it, I mean, it creates a potential awkward situation. And that's what I think people are afraid of, is they're yep. afraid of like, oh, this could be really awkward if they say no. And it's like, if you realize that like, actually, if they say no, it's not really that awkward because yep. then you can follow up with care and be like, hey, yep. that's totally okay. Is there somebody else that you know that I could talk to or whatever? So don't get so freaked out by it that you don't ask directly. Right. So when you ask for, when you ask directly, ask for it and then pause and let them think about it. Too often, we move past it really quickly because we're like, would you please donate to our organization? But also, you don't have to because it's really not that big a deal. <laughs> it's okay. I like you either way. We're friends, right? How's your family? Like, it's this really quick moving on. But ask, pause, and let them actually answer. If they say yes, say thank you. If they say no, say, hey, thank you for letting me know. I appreciate your honesty. Are you okay with me keeping in touch with you going forward or keeping you updated? about the organization or, you know, is there anything else that we could be doing as an organization that might allow you to consider us in the future? It's okay. You'll learn stuff from that. You question. will learn stuff from that <laughs> question. Um, so ask directly, don't be afraid of asking directly, but also recognize that if they decline, you need to be able to handle that with not a personal, well, fine then, I guess we're not friends. <laughs> it's not a reflection of your friendship. It's a reflection of, well, actually, I don't even know what it's a reflection of. Yeah, it could it just, be a lot of different they things. They might just not have 100 bucks. Yeah. Like, I mean, you just, you don't, don't take it personally. Don't worry about if you're going to have to take it personally. Like, th they chose to get together with you. They probably at least like you enough as a human being that you don't need to worry about that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And That's our true. tip number seven uh, is avoid the three big mistakes that nonprofits make. And we're actually, for this tip, we're gonna point you over to our Avoid the Three Big Mistakes video that we created. It's somewhere over here on the screen. <laughs> I don't know exactly where it's gonna show up, but we're gonna encourage you to click on that and check that out. These three big mistakes are a really, really big problem for a lot of nonprofits, and they're pretty easy to avoid. See you in the next video.